Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and today I am bringing you a very brief video that will just cover the concept of a T flip flop. Now, the reason I'm making this video is my most popular videos on YouTube right now are my hipster door videos, and in those videos I have a lever input on one side of the door, and I've gotten many, many comments wondering how you can put an input on the other side of the door that will work and activate the door just the same as the lever that I showed in the video. Now one way to accomplish that was using a Zor gate that I made in a previous video. Make sure to go check that out if you want to. But the other way is to use a T flip-flop like one of the designs I have here, but there are many more other ones. And so I thought I would make a dedicated video to the T flip-flop concept itself and show you these two designs. And then also later on I'll show you one of those hipster doors and I'll show you how you can hook it up on both sides. So with that, let's get on with the video. So a T flip-flop takes any length of pulse and converts it into a lever-like input. Or for example, it turns a button into a lever in plain terms. So as you can see, if I push this button, this redstone lamp will turn on, and it will stay on indefinitely until I push this button again, and then it will turn off indefinitely until I push this button again. Now, like I said, this will work with any input signal length as long as it is not a one-tick pulse for this specific design, and as long as it is a continuous stream. So if you have a 40-tick pulse, then there's a one-tick gap, and then another 40-tick pulse, that won't work. It has to be completely continuous, and it will still work just like this, no matter how long it is. So some common inputs that you might see are the button, like I have here, and also the pressure plate, because as long as you stand on it, it will give an output and it will go off, but no matter what, it is continuous unless you obviously like walk on and off of it. But again, like this design right here, if I push this button, as you can see, this lamp turns on. If I push it again, it will turn off. So hopefully that made sense as a concept, and I will quickly explain how these two designs work to illustrate that concept, and then, like I said, I will go over how to actually put it in a build. This first design is quite simple. All it does is have a sticky piston, push out an observer, which supplies this sticky piston with a one-tick pulse, and in the Java edition of Minecraft, a one-tick pulse will either spit out or retract the block. It won't extend and retract it. In Bedrock Edition that is different, but as you can see if I push this button it will do exactly that. It will go out, this piston will reach out and grab that block, and then if I push it again it will spit it out just like that. This other design works quite a bit differently, and this one I believe works in Bedrock and Java Edition, and what I have here is two droppers, one facing upward into this top dropper, and this dropper facing into a hopper going down going into this bottom dropper again. Now what this does is this top dropper will be supplied with one singular item. When this button gets pressed, it will shoot out this item into this hopper, it will go down into this hopper, and then into this hopper, powering this redstone lamp. Then when the button is pushed again, it will power this bottom dropper, pushing it into this top dropper, and keeping it there until the button is pushed again, and it'll go around just like that. So as a demonstration, if I look inside this dropper, you'll see one item. This bottom one doesn't have anything. If I push this, you'll hear that click. It'll go around, and then this will give an, uh, an output, and the block is right here in this bottom dropper. If I then push the button again, as you can see, you hear another click, and it goes up back to this top dropper, and this lamp turns back off. Now I have a button directly on this dropper, but Similar to this one, you can just have any input you want, say a repeater, just like this, and it will work the exact same, as long as it is a continuous pulse like I mentioned before. Now that I've gone over the concept of a T flip-flop and these two designs, let's get on to showing how you can use it in an actual build. Here I have my updated 1x2 hipster door. And as you can see, if I flick this lever, it will open, and if I flick it again, it will close. A link to this build will be in the description below. 
One thing to note about this particular build is when I showed you how to build this, there's just one lever on this side, and there's absolutely nothing on this side to power it. So today I'm going to show you how to change this lever input into two buttons, one on each side, that will then work just the same as this lever. Now what I've done to the build is extend this platform a little bit and add a sidewall to both sides, and this is where I will be putting my button, but you can actually put them wherever you want as long as they don't actually interfere with this redstone, the buttons themselves that is. And what you need to do is just connect the outputs of the two buttons like this, so they activate the same thing just like that, and then do one of the designs over here. I'm going to be using this one with the two different pistons, and so I'm going to put one sticky piston here with an observer here, and then another sticky piston right here that will get powered by that one with a redstone block here. And then I'm going to put um, a repeater here and another repeater here. And as you can see, it'll open. And if I push this button, it will close all the way. If I push it again, it will open all the way. Not only that, if I come to the other side and push this button, it will close all the way. And then if I push it again, it will again open all the way. One thing to note about this build that I just showed you is I did just make this very fast. I didn't mean it to be compact or anything like that or actually used in a world. Obviously you can if you want to, but there are definitely smaller ways to make this. And I just don't need, uh, see the need right now to show them. Anyway guys, that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe down below. I make videos just like this one every single Friday, and I'll see you in the next one.